in the last stream, we were working on a little bit more in the way of blood magic. We set up this extremely tranquil incense altar down here on at the lower level of our base, allowing us to uh, imbue our sacrificial knife with uh, the tranquil powers of this incense altar, uh, which in turn allows us to get more LP every time we use the sacrificial dagger up near our blood altar. Now, between streams, I have uh, gone ahead and made quite a few more blank slates. We're going to need so many of these in today's stream, so I've kind of got a head start on that, and we're currently making even more as we speak. I've also done a little bit of work adding more runes to this uh, setup, and I've also rearranged uh, the runes a little bit as well to make things a little bit more symmetrical. Uh, we've still got our runes of capacity, our runes of speed, and our runes of self-sacrifice, uh, but we now have more runes of self-sacrifice and more runes of speed making the actual craft here faster. Now, you may notice that the Tranquil Altar, uh, while still extremely tranquil, is looking a little bit less woody <laughs> than it did at the end of the last stream. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot more fire now, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It definitely doesn't look as great, I don't think. Uh, obviously, the reason for that, by the way, uh, is because even though these uh, bits of oakwood down here are not flammable, because they're not really oakwood, they're chiseling bits, but uh, the fire still spreads up and the other logs do still burn. Not a terrible problem, uh, because fire is still a tranquil block, so it does still count uh, towards the incense altar, and uh, if we get our divination sigil here, you can see in the top left that we are still at uh, the maximum plus 120 uh, on our percentage boost there, so we are uh, still doing just fine. That might change once we upgrade to the uh, the one stone path, um, but before we get started with too much blood magic today, chat, um, and I do want to do a bit more blood magic, because hopefully... By the end of today's stream, we're going to have automated the production of steel casing so we can request it from our refined storage system and have as many of them as we want automatically made uh, for us. But before we get to that, um, I do want to start with something that's going to seem a little bit out of left field, but is going to make sense uh, once we get around to it later on in today's stream. So I want to start with a little system that is going to allow us to generate experience. So if we wanted to make, for example, some bottles of enchanting or bottles of enchanting, we can make these in the solidification chamber with experience, liquid experience, and glass bottles. The problem is getting the liquid experience. Now, thankfully, you can make liquid experience using experience confections, and most importantly, you can make them with gas tiers. In doing so, you get a certain amount of experience back. Now, I believe gas tiers are the best option here, and you'll see each different item gives a different amount. But the core idea is that one experience confection plus one gas tier gets you 1,200 liquid experience. You can then use that 1,200 liquid experience with three sugar to generate one experience confection. And so as long as you have a good supply of sugar and gas tiers, you can effectively duplicate the amount of experience that you have infinitely. And in doing so, generate infinite experience, uh, which we can then turn into bottles of enchanting, which we could then use on ourselves to get more levels, which is going to come in useful later on in today's stream, because I do want to do a little bit of enchanting uh, before this stream is done. And again, the reason why uh, will become apparent a little later on down the line. So essentially what I'm thinking of doing here is just basically duplicating uh, this kind of setup above, just like right here. Um, but this time we're going to export the sugar to the uh, solidification chamber. Uh, we're going to export the gas tiers to the melting chamber, uh, and then we're gonna have the uh, experience cycle round. So I am gonna build this a little wider. The reason for that is that I would like to have a tank in the middle that can store any excess experience, and, and thus allow us to get like a bigger backlog. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it in the, uh, the last stream, but we did craft this basic fluid tank. Uh, the reason we crafted this, and uh, it's from Mechanism, and super easy to make, uh, but the reason that we crafted it is that uh, Mechanism has a mode switching feature, so right here it says item mode switch. By default, the hotkey is N. So if you hold the tank and press N, uh, you can toggle on and off bucket mode. And in bucket mode, you can use this tank as basically a bucket that can hold 14 buckets worth of, of fluid. So what we did is we brought down the uh, tank that we have full of lava, the quantum tank, placed it down, used the uh, basic fluid tank here to take out 14 buckets worth, and then used that to place down all this lava as opposed to having to individually place down uh, every single lava source block. Instead, you can just use bucket mode here, uh, right click to pick up, or uh, shift right click, I believe, to put down, which is uh, super useful. I am going to empty out the last of this lava here, though, because I would now like to uh, turn off bucket mode and instead grab a, uh, a fluid cable 
and use this as a buffer for excess experience. Okay, so this setup here is almost done. We are gonna have to make this experience pile on here uh, because we use this to get our initial experience confections. Now uh, you can see there it says use sugar on an experience pylon. So to make this, we need uh, two vines, one hopper, two lime dye, one fire charge, two nether brick, and one crystallized amber. Uh, we have just made a crystallized amber and we already had the, the fire charges there. So really we need lime dye, which we can now make using the RGB honeycombs uh, that we're getting from our RGBs. Now that we have those up and running, uh, we also need two vines though. So to get uh, those two vines, we do also need uh, some nether bricks. I will begin smelting up some netherrack in uh, our furnace upstairs, but uh, to get the vines, I think our best option is to simply grab some of the jungle seeds that we got from, I think, sifting dirt right at the start of the series. If we go ahead and plant those down and give it a quick shift, uh, I think actually if we do like something like this, we should get a giant jungle tree. And then of course we can grab just some regular old cheers, uh, quickly take care of this guy with our netherite pexel. Get out of here, Gus. But, but then we can, go, of course, uh, just uh, FTB Ultimine all of the vines there. And that should be pretty much everything for the uh, the experience pylon, which says that by default, it uh, collects XP orbs nearby, uh, but it also says players above. So I'm thinking that if we just put this down and then stand on top of it, it might collect our experience. It does. So if you press shift uh, whilst on top of that, uh, it begins to suck the experience out of you. And so now what we should be able to do is take some sugar, right click that sugar onto the experience pylon and boom, we get a experience confection. And it looks like it used one bucket worth of experience to get that. Now we are going to need a few of these if our system is going to work effectively. Uh, so I'm going to dump basically all of my experience here into this uh, pylon. That's gonna get us four experience confections. And so on the lower level here, and we will tear down that tree soon, don't worry, chat. But uh, essentially what we have uh, is we have an exporter over here, exporting sugar directly into the solidification chamber, much like we were doing with sticks beforehand in this one. We then have another exporter exporting gas tiers into this item router. The reason we're doing it that way is to make sure that we only keep a certain number of gas tiers in the melting chamber. Uh, once again, we're using this guy, the regulator augment, uh, currently set to 50, so it shouldn't put any more uh, than 50 gas tiers in this melting chamber. Uh, so for example, if I take a few out here, it's only gonna put more in once we get below 50, then tops it back up to 50. Now, the problem that we're currently running into is that the modular router is sending the gas tiers to the left-hand slot and we need it to be in the right-hand slot because if we look at the recipe here, it, they do have to be in the right slot in order for this to work. If we tried to give this power right now, it wouldn't do anything. In fact, let's go ahead and request two uh, flux points. We'll put one down here and one down here. Make sure both of those are set to the Gaming on Caffeine network. And yeah, this is not producing experience. It has to be done this way around. So what I'm hoping here is that I'm hoping that doesn't happen, <laughs> which hopefully should be doable. So what we should see happening, ideally, is we should see the uh, the fluid being pulled out of uh, this basic fluid tank here over into the uh, the solidification chamber. So chat's telling me that you can only pull uh, fluids out of the bottom of this tank, which might be correct. Um, but I think we probably don't want to use these fluid cables because as I mentioned before, they hold um, unlimited amounts of fluid. So um, all of the fluid that would be stored or hopefully should be stored in our experience tank uh, is probably just gonna end up being stored in this pipe, even if we do get it to work. And so what I actually might look at doing here, chat, is uh, tinkering around with something we've not really played with yet. And that is the, uh, the fluid modules for the modular routers. So let's put one router here and one router here. We'll then right click on this fluid module and we're gonna set it to right. And you'll see on the uh, right hand side here, there's an error saying that the fluid is coming into the modular router, which is correct. So we want to put uh, this fluid module in here. And what that should do is that should pull fluids out of the melting chamber into the item router. And we are going to need a few more of these uh, modules. So let's go ahead and grab some more cauldrons and make a few more of these because we then want to have another module this one is going to uh, send from the item router elsewhere. So we want to flip the arrow just by clicking on it. 
And then we want to make sure that the left is selected. So now when we put this in, uh, that should now be set to pull fluids from the melting chamber and send them over to the fluid tank. Now, if we hover over this uh, and press I, it does specify that the router's buffer must have a fluid container item in it. Basically, you have to put something in this slot that can hold fluids. That could be a tank, that could be a bucket, any item that can hold fluids can go in that slot. For now though, uh, if we just put a bucket in like so, uh, that should now move any experience made in here over to the basic fluid tank. That's the idea. Um, hopefully, uh, we, obviously we can't see it working right now because there are no fluids in the melting chamber, but hopefully if we do the same thing with this guy, we're gonna see it work. So right hand side, pulling in, left hand side, sending out, and a bucket, And there we go, it is working. Um, I did mess up the uh, the right-hand side one there, but that is now going, and experience confections are being produced. And so all we have to do from there is take our regular item cable and then run that up and around and over into here. We'll set that to extract. And so now the confection should make its way over into here. And again, we wanna make sure that it goes in that left-hand slot. So the question now is, is the confection made fast enough to get put back in here? Hopefully the answer is yes, but it looks like the answer is no, unfortunately. Okay, so a little bit of time later, uh, I've been talking with the Twitch chat, trying to figure out a way to, uh, to fix the gas tier problem. What we've done is we've set the item router to require a redstone signal, so it won't send um, a gas tier over until it has a redstone signal. And then we've added a redstone clock here with a 20 tick delay. So essentially what we've done is we've uh, kind of slowed down the melting chamber uh, the problem was arising because the solidification chamber takes 100 ticks to produce the confection, but then over here, the melting chamber only takes 60 ticks to melt that confection. So we were using the confections faster than we were producing them, which meant no matter how many confections we had, we were always going to eventually run out, and as soon as we run out, the gas tiers would overflow into the left-hand slot, and things would break. You can't do the recipe the other way around, so we have to make sure that there's always more experienced confections in than gas tiers. With this redstone clock here, we've slowed down the gas tier insertion so that now we start with 13 confections. One is used, it goes down to 12, but then before the next gas tier comes in, it goes back up to 13 and the cycle continues. So ideally, this should continue running and continue producing experience. We're already at 15,000 millibuckets of experience in here. Uh, we can hold up to 64,000 in this tank uh, with a further 14,000 in this tank here. And so hopefully later on in today's stream, we can come over and produce a fair number of bottles of enchanting, or hopefully quite a few of them, uh, and use those to uh, really bump up our experience level. So we'll leave this running. While that's running, uh, let's head on over to our Blood Magic Altar. So one of the first things that I would like to do today, chat, is I would like to upgrade the altar here to tier four. Not only is that going to allow us to uh, upgrade the uh, intense altar down here with one path, but it's also gonna open up certain rituals that we're going to need if we're gonna automate the production of steel casing. So uh, if we grab the old uh, book here, and if we quickly get rid of the drops that we got from Gus earlier in the stream, let's go to blood altars, the blood altar, and then let's visualize the tier four altar here. And if we right click right about there, uh, it's gonna show us what we need. We need, I think it's uh, 28 more runes, as well as some stone bricks, and then four of these bloodstone bricks right at the top. And the bloodstone bricks, are where things get a little tricky because to make the bloodstone bricks, we require regular stone, easy enough, along with a weak blood shard. Now the weak blood shard is made in the, uh, the ARC, which is an abbreviation for the alchemical reaction chamber. So all we have to do is put an imbued slate or a master blood orb into the alchemical reaction chamber along with one sanguine reverter. Now this guy, the reverter here, this is where things get tricky because to make the reverter, we need a Hellfire Forge, which in and of itself, super easy to make. In fact, we can probably go ahead and make the Hellfire Forge basically right away here. Yeah, we have everything for it. Uh, we can place that down over next to our alchemy table, right about here. And uh, this UI will use in uh, just a second. But uh, back to the old blood chart here. To make the reverter, we need one block of stone, one shears, an imbued slate, and an iron ingot. All easy enough. The hard part is that if we hover over the arrow here, we need a minimum of 350 will, 
And this recipe will use 30 will. So basically, we have these uh, Tartaric gems right here. So if we type in Tartaric into JEI, there are four tiers of Tartaric gem, and each gem can hold a different number of will. Uh, this one can hold 64, then 256, then 1024, and then 4096. We have to get the third tier, the one that can hold up to 1024, because this recipe requires a minimum of 350. So we can't fit 350 into the lesser gem. We have to go with the higher gem. Now, uh, when you make these, they originally start with zero will inside of them. The way that you generate will is in one of two ways. You can either do it the old fashioned way, uh, which is what we did right at the start of the uh, Blood Magic streams. Uh, we made the soul snare. You throw a soul snare at a mob. If you then kill the mob, you get its demonic will. If you have a Tartaric gem, I'm pretty sure the will will just go directly into the gem. You don't get it in the form of an actual demonic will like we did the first time around. Uh, but alternatively, you can also make the Sentient Sword. This uses demon will to unleash its full potential and contains raw will. So basically, if you kill a mob with the Sentient Sword, it will increment the number of wills in your Tartaric gem by one. And so effectively, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have to kill 350 mobs with the Sentient Sword if we want to make the reverter which we need to make the bloodstone which we need to upgrade our altar which we need to get higher tier rituals so to make the sentient sword here in the uh, hellfire forge we need one tartaric gem with one iron sword this recipe requires zero will because of course you don't have any will at this point in time uh, and the petty tartaric gem which is the first tier here is one gold one redstone one lapis one glass and then one will which you can use just a regular demonic will for this so let's grab one redstone, one gold, one lapis, and was it one glass? Yeah, and one glass. Now, I don't think we currently have a uh, demonic will lying around. We do not. Um, however, we can go ahead and make a snare here. In fact, we probably already had some snares left over. We did. If we take that, and if we go and uh, throw it at a mob, these zombies here, handily in the right place at the right time. As soon as you see those particle effects, you can kill them up, and it should drop... Oh, he, he's gone. Uh, it should drop a demonic will. Now, uh, for whatever reason, one of our uh, bees has escaped. No, I want to... <laughs> okay, it's probably going to be easier here if we actually just go through uh, to the nether to do this. So let's try this again here. Let's uh, throw... Oh, he picked up the will. Okay, so we'll throw a snare at this guy as well. Um, I think he should drop the will either way. There we go. So now we have uh, two wills. If we do a quick slash home here, we can now use this over in the old uh, Hellfire Forge with our redstone, gold, lapis, and glass. Like so. And that is going to craft us a petty tartaric gem. Nice. Now we can take this and we can put it back in with an iron sword. And again, this one doesn't require any will, so we can actually take the will out, and that's going to get us the Sentient Sword. Now, well, we can look in the, uh, the book here, and if I'm not mistaken, the Sentient Sword actually gets more powerful the more will that you have, or the more wills that you have inside of your Tartaric Gem. So the sword is kind of linked to the gem, which uh, right now is gone. We have to make another one because we just used our Tartaric Gem uh, to make the sword. So let's quickly get another uh, Redstone Gold lapis and glass but yeah the sword will uh, look at how many wills you have in the tartaric gem and it will deal more damage accordingly so the more uh, wills that you have on your person the more damage uh, this sword will do out of the gate not a particularly powerful sword but as we level it up it should get more and more powerful now this kind of leads me back to the experience setup because i would like to try and enchant this sentient sword to be a little bit uh, better and deal a little bit more damage before we head through and try and kill 350 mobs with it uh, and by head through i mean uh, the nether i think that's probably our best bet uh, for killing 350 mobs so if we're going to enchant this we're going to need a couple of things of course first things first we're going to need an enchanting uh, table which thankfully uh, we should be able to make fairly easily we just need one regular book which uh, we can make. We are a little light on leather, but uh, boom, that is done. And the traditional wisdom here, 
And we'll put it over here for now. And also, chat is uh, yelling at me to get rid of this tree. So I will quickly uh, get rid of this. People are just shouting timber <laughs> in the Twitch chat, which I assume means Isaac, get rid of the tree. <laughs> so there we go. The tree is uh, the tree is gone. But uh, normally, you would put bookshelves around the enchantment table, and that would increase the uh, level of enchants you get. Now, we do have a mod installed. Uh, that mod is called Apotheosis, and that adds these uh, three tiers, or these three, uh, I guess, aspects of enchanting. Uh, there's Eterna, there's Quanta, and there's Arcana. And basically, as we uh, put down bookshelves around the altar, uh, these bars are going to fill up, and they each have different effects. So the higher your Eterna, the higher level enchants you can get. If you get this all the way up max, I think you can get uh, level 100 enchants. Quanta is a bit of a weird one. The more quanta you have, the more variable your enchants are. So this one's a little confusing, but according to the wiki, it kind of adds an element of randomness to your enchants. So if you have a super high quanta, when you go to enchant something, there's a chance that you get like a super, an even higher level of enchant. Let's say you go for a level uh, 50 enchant. There's a chance with a super high quanta that you could turn that into a level 100 enchant, just by chance. But there's also a chance that it could go down. It's not always a good thing. So the higher your quanta, the higher the randomness is, I guess, but you can get like really swingy enchant. So you could click a level 80 enchant and actually get like a level 160 enchant, which is just crazy. Um, or you could get like a level 40 enchant, right? Which is less than ideal. Um, but we're probably gonna cycle through these multiple times. Um, so we probably want a high quanta. And uh, there's an arcana, the higher your arcana, the more likely you are to get rarer enchants. So if you get the super high, uh, you're more likely to get things that you wouldn't normally get, like beheading um, or, or anything like that. Now, with basic oak shelves here, uh, you can see that uh, each one gives you plus one Eterna, and you can get a maximum of 15 Eterna with oak bookshelves. So we could use those. However, uh, as you can see, there are better shelves available to us. Uh, things like the Hell Shelf give you uh, Eterna up to a maximum of 22.5, and they give you Quanta. Uh, Eterna, by the way, goes up to 50. You can see right there, uh, current value zero out of 50. Uh, and the maximum level enchant that you can do is two times the Eterna. So if you put down uh, 15 oak bookshelves, that gives you an Eterna of 15, which therefore gives you a maximum level enchant of 30, right? Which is standard Minecraft stuff. Whereas with the hell shelf, you can get a, a, up to 45 level enchants. However, we could take this even further because I believe the best option is this guy right here, the draconic end shelf. This, could, uh, this can get you all the way up to that maximum 50 Eterna, thus offering us level 100 enchants now whether or not we're going to have enough experience from our little system over here to actually use level 100 enchants is yet to be seen however um we should be able to make maybe not these because we don't have the dragon head but we should be able to make the tier before that the end shelf regular which does max out 40 it's a little lower but it also has a higher quanta and a higher arcana and this i think we can make it's made with ender pearls Dra uh, dragon's breath normal bookshelves and then endstone bricks so regular bookshelves, we should be able to make fairly easily. We are going to have to get some more leather, but we do have a zombie bee now, so we should be able to make quite a bit of rotten flesh and use that to make the prepared flesh that we can smelt into leather. And the pearls we have in abundance. And stone, we can actually make fairly easily with lava and glowstone in a barrel. So over here, we have our regular old barrel. In our system, we should have a tank that is full of lava from earlier in the series when we had all of them crucibles running. Uh, yeah, we've still got well over a million millibuckets of lava there. And so if we quickly do something like this and like this, we can then go ahead and grab some glowstone. And if we uh, rapidly right click with that glowstone, we should get a stack of endstone. Nice. And we can craft that up. And of course, we get a stack of endstone bricks. So we can use those to make the uh, outer edge, I guess, of the bookshelf. The only slightly tricky bit is going to be the dragon's breath. However, this is where our bees come to save us because we can actually get dragon's breath in the centrifuge using ender honeycomb. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, our ender bees are actually inside of the tier four apiary here. So I'm thinking what we should probably do is... I'm going to temporarily take away the sender module, the puller module even, uh, that pulls from... I'll take all the puller modules out for, the, for a minute, uh, because what I want to do is I want to specifically get the ender combs, and I want to run those through the centrifuge with some glass bottles in the bottle slot. 
What that should hopefully do is that should hopefully give us a chance to generate some Dragon's Breath. You'll see it's a 25% chance, um, but you do get nine if you can get uh, that 25% chance with a Ender Honeycomb block. And given that we get, I think, is it eight Ender Honeycomb blocks per uh, pollination here, uh, we do have a pretty good chance to get at least 18 Ender Dragon Breath when we, uh, when we run it through the Centrifuge, which is more than enough because we're only going to go uh, for 15 of these end shelves. Okay, so eight Ender Honeycomb. Let's throw that in over here. I think just having these glass bottles in is, is enough. It does seem to be enough. Did that get pulled out? It did. Look at that. So that's our first nine Dragon's Breath. We'll let the rest of these run through here because if we get more than nine Dragon's Breath, that's also good. Okay, so we did get the... Uh, basically, we got exactly what was statistically likely for us to get. We got 18 uh, from eight blocks. So I did make my first uh, batch of leather using the uh, prepared flesh recipe, but chat did point out, uh, as per usual, that I am a fool. And in fact, if we get the alchemy catalyst back under our mana pool, uh, we can actually use the mana that we have in the mana pool uh, for a one-to-one -one rotten flesh to leather recipe, as opposed to a four-to-one. Like to make it with the prepared flesh, you have to craft four rotten flesh into one prepared flesh that then gets you one leather. Uh, whereas with the mana pool, one rotten flesh equals one leather, just straight away. And for now, we can just go ahead and drop all those in. Um, I have temporarily moved the zombie B over into the tier four apiary. Uh, so we are going to be producing a lot more uh, rotten flesh uh, for at least a little while. I put down one little flower frame back there. But uh, that should be all of the leather that we need. If we quickly craft up some planks, we can then hopefully craft up 15 regular bookshelves, of course, after we craft up uh, some regular books. How are we doing on paper? We have zero paper. Of course, we have our sugar cane over here for just this occasion. So boom, and boom. That is 53 books, more than enough. From there, boom, and boom. There is 17 bookshelves again, uh, more than enough. And so hopefully, we should now have everything it takes to make the end shelves. We do, we're just missing a little bit in the way of endstone, but once again, we can just grab some uh, glowstone and uh, quickly right click on this barrel over here and a few more endstone bricks later. And that should be everything for the remaining end shelves. Nice, we got 17, uh, a few too many, but still fine. So over here, let's go ahead and throw those all down. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I believe if we put down 15, that might give us the maximum amount of a turner. Uh, it's not going to show us our turner until we put a an item in there. So let's grab some lapis and do this. And yeah, so our turner is currently at forte, which is the maximum that you can get with the ender shelf. Now you'll notice that our quanta and our arcana are a little lower. Now we can up the quanta. Again, I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing to use the quanta, but I'm all for adding a, an element of randomness to this. So one other shelf that we can work with, and a shelf that I feel like I would be doing the pack a disservice if we didn't make, is the B shelf, which is this guy right here. This takes away some Eterna, but gives you 100% quanta. It fills up your quanta bar. So it adds just ultimate randomness to your, uh, to your setup. So uh, let's go ahead and make another bookshelf. We are going to need one more book for that. And boom. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if we put this down... Let's say, we'll put it in the middle back just for uh, symmetry's sake. That's going to bring our quanta up to the max. So maximum randomness. But we also now only have 27 on the Eterna. Uh, even if we put down the uh, other end shelf there, that does bring us back down to 30. So our max level now is 60. But I think we can still add more of these to push it back up even further. Yeah, so now we're back up at 36. That gives us a max level of 72. And I think if we get two more end shelves here, we could put them here and here to bring that back up to 40 to give us the maximum level chance. Boom, boom. And hopefully, yeah, that puts us back up at uh, 40, which again is the maximum we can get without going to the draconic end shelf, which we can't do just yet because we haven't fought the end dragon uh, or haven't been, you actually don't get the dragon head from fighting the end dragon, you get it from uh, ships in the end, but we've not been to the end yet, so we don't have the dragon head. However, we can still get level 80 enchantments. And with our super high quanta, there's even a chance that we get like level 160 
enchantments, which is uh, which is super nice. Uh, chat is reminding me to put my modules back in the router here. That is a good idea. We did have to get uh, another batch of Dragon's Breath, which is why uh, those were taken out. But um, at this point, chat, we need to start looking and seeing if we can't get some levels so we can start actually using uh, this system. Now, uh, you'll notice that our solidification chamber here is very full, which is good. So earlier I mentioned using bottles here to make bottles of enchanting. However, chat has pointed out uh, that I can just consume the uh, confection. So you just take a confection and right click and you get levels from that. So I think what we're going to want to do is probably make another, maybe two solidification chambers. Because essentially what I'm thinking now is that uh, I'm assuming that we can pull uh, some of the uh, liquid XP out of either this fluid tank or uh, this solidification chamber here, um, or both, and begin using that to make confections and kind of start to slowly but surely siphon confections out of the system and uh, make use of some of this, uh, you know, 80,000 millibuckets of, of essence that we have, right? That's the plan. Um, what I might do is maybe let's put this here. Let's get a fluid cable. Let's put that here. I'm then going to take out these fluid modules. That's going to stop the 14,000 buckets here being moved over. But I'm hoping what I can do is I can start to pull the 63,000 directly out into here. So at that point, we can then go ahead and uh, get rid of this fluid pipe. We can turn this back on. So that's going to start moving uh, this experience again. But now this experience over here, uh, we can use for making even more uh, of these uh, confections. But the confections that we make down here are going to be ones that we just consume, not ones that we pipe back around to make more XP out of. Okay, so Chet has handily helped me out here because uh, we can just pull, we don't need these extra solidification chambers. You can just take the XP directly down into the experience pylon. And then from there, we can just grab sugar and uh, we can just keep right clicking the sugar to get more experience pylons. And as always, if we do this with a rapid right click, we get, you know, just all of the experience pylons uh, at once. All of the confections, sorry. Um, at once and so there we go we got 62 if we go ahead and just eat all of those we get 41 levels which is high but not really as high as i was uh, as i was hoping however we can do this again here right we do have another uh, 41,000 millibuckets up at the top so if we do the same thing again with this and this, I think it's fine if we take out some of the experience here because we do still have uh, some confections over in uh, in this right hand slot. So extract, stop extracting. Uh, this is now once again 43 more buckets. This should continue to work. There should be enough confections in here to keep this system going. Uh, basically, I think we just took like one or two off of this number here. But uh, let's go ahead and grab our sugar. Let's once again pull that out. And then consume all of these. 50. Okay, 50 levels I think is probably fine. Um, it's a little unfortunate. We did maybe go a bit overkill on the uh, on the hell shelves if, uh, if that's not what we needed. Uh, we could in fact actually take some of these hell shelves down because I think if we can get this uh, Eterna value down to 25, we can probably get like a bang on level 50 enchant. Okay, so we've removed some of the end shelves and actually put down some oak bookshelves because these add uh, one point to the Eterna here. Uh, and now we actually have uh, an option that is bang on 50. So let's go ahead and click it. Again, we could get some, we could get really lucky and get some really good enchants with the quanta. We could get unlucky and get some pretty bad enchants. I'm hoping uh, that we get lucky here, but uh, let's have a look. Uh, we got Sweeping Edge 6, Ender 5, Bane of the Arthropods 8, and Knockback 3. Okay. Um, I was kind of hoping for maybe like Smite could be useful. Sweeping Edge is definitely useful. Knockback, uh, less useful, although that is the one that we did know. Um, Ender 5, I'm actually not sure what Ender does. Uh, Bane of the Arthropods, if we come across any spiders, this thing uh, is a, a spider killer. Now, in the future, one thing we can do is that there is a enchantment extractor. You can make this from uh, Industrial Foregoing, and you can basically remove the enchantments from the sword and apply them to books so you could reapply them elsewhere. So um, at some point, we could look at uh, removing the uh, effects from here and then maybe putting other effects on uh, when we get more experience. And I guess actually we are at level 48. For some reason, I always assume that we're going to use all of our levels whenever we do that. We don't. And so what we can do here, actually, is we can make this extractor, right? Okay, so chat is telling me that the uh, disenchanter from Cyclic is 
the same thing, but cheaper. Uh, this is just emeralds, obsidian, and an enchantment table. So let's put this down like over here. Does need power. That's fine. We can request a flux point. And just put that down right about here. Make sure that's set to the right network. And then I believe what we can do now is that we can grab some books and we can begin to pull some of the enchantments off of this guy. So we change that to always active. Uh, it's going to start pulling these off. So we got knockback three, uh, we got sweeping edge six, we got ender five, and then uh, bane of the arthropods eight, <laughs> if we can make uh, one more book here. But essentially, once we've uh, pulled all of these off, we can go in for another another enchant, right? And try and get like another level 15 and see if we can get something a little bit better. And then if we want, we could even put certain things like, you know, maybe uh, Ben of the Arthropods back on later on down the line if we really wanted it, even though I don't think it's going to be particularly great. Okay, so I got uh, a bit more experience here because I kind of want to get this level 51 enchant uh, because sharpness seems pretty good. Again, hopefully we're going to get some good luck. That was incredibly bad luck. So this is kind of an example of just how bad the quanta can be for you because we got 51 in levels, we got sharpness one. That's what we got. We got sharpness one. Right, okay. So we're going to take that off, of course. That's not what we want. Uh, thankfully, it didn't use too many levels, so we can uh, we can try again here, but oofed. <laughs> oofed. <laughs> hopefully, but that's our, our bad luck. Hopefully, next time we'll get uh, super lucky. Okay, let's try a 45. Knockback 2, Beheading 3. Beheading, definitely something we could have done with uh, earlier in the series, for sure. <laughs> we'll go for 48. Sea Infusion 4, not really something we're after, but uh, I'm not quite sure what Life Mending does. Sharpness 6 is useful. Life Mending 1, Teleportation, Sea Infusion 4, Scavenger 1, and Sharpness 6. Life Mending takes some of your health to repair durability. Oh, that might be a, that might, that might be pretty good, actually. I think I might stick with this chat. In the future, we could come back and try and get some uh, some better enchants. For now, I'm going to put a chest down here and put the enchanted books in there. Uh, we can come back to that. Um, but for now, chat, we actually have to start doing what we uh, what we need to do, uh, and that is killing mobs with this uh, sentient sword. So we have our petty uh, Tartaric gem. Uh, also, real quick, let me uh, collect this guy before he uh, falls off the edge there. But uh, essentially now, we have to kill 350 mobs. Again, we do need to remember that as we uh, kill mobs, the damage will get higher. You'll see before, it actually went from 5 to 10 there um, on damage because we now have one, one will. I don't think it goes up quite so much every single time, uh, but it will go up over time as we get more and more Tartaric will in our Tartaric gem. Okay, so not too long later, we have almost a full 64 uh, wills in our petty Tartaric gem. What we've gone ahead and done is we've made a little uh, pigman spawner. So here in the nether, uh, the fortress, by the way, is just over in that direction. So that's where our portal is. Uh, we built it far enough away so that mobs are not spawning in the fortress. But uh, over here, we have a big platform that is covered in vector plates. Uh, these are basically conveyor belts. Uh, they're fairly easy to make. Uh, they're made with sugar, slime, and then blank plates, which are made with black dye and stone. Uh, black dye we've made from our RGBs and from our black petals, and stone we have from our material stoneworks factory. Uh, but essentially, Mobs can spawn on these, and as they spawn on them, they get pushed to this hole. That hole then drops them down to here. Uh, the drop takes them down to a low enough health total so that when we hit them with the Sentient Sword, they instantly die. Uh, a few of them are spawning on this little platform here, but that's not a huge deal. We can get rid of those guys uh, fairly easily. But uh, the idea, or the main idea, I should say, of this system is that we have an elevator. We use the elevator to go down to a lower level. This lower level is far enough away from the top platform to where it causes the pigmen to spawn, and you can hear them, uh, or the piglins as well, uh, but you can hear them spawning and falling in. Once a few of them have fallen in, we can jump up, we can kill the ones that have spawned in, and then we can dip back down and repeat the whole process over and over and over again. Of course, right now, we don't actually need to do that because we currently have a full uh, petty Tartaric gem here. What we need to do now is we need to upgrade to the next tier of Tartaric gem, uh, that being the uh, lesser Tartaric gem. Uh, to do this, we do have to spend 20, and we have to have a minimum of 60 in our current gem. Thankfully, we have 64, or just shy of. Uh, so we need one diamond, one block of lapis, and one block of redstone, all of which we have. And so back over here. Uh, now, there was some confusion in the Twitch chat. The Hellfire Forge is quite smart. If, you're, if you have to use 
a tartaric gem in a recipe. So for example, this one right here, uh, it will pull the will out of that gem. So we don't have to have a second one in the right here. It will just pull the 20 from here. We should still end up with uh, 44 in the next gem. There it is. And you'll see this one currently has 44 and can now hold up to 256. And so now uh, we just need to go back and do the same thing over and over again until we can make the common gem. And then once we have that, we need to go over and over until we get to 350 will. Once we have 350 will, uh, then we can make our reverter. So diamond, block of gold, imbued slate, and lesser tartaric gem with over 240 will quality. Again, we can put it in this slot here. Uh, again, it should use the other uh, will from this tartaric gem, and we should get our common tartaric gem, which now has a will quality of 191. So all we have to do now, chat, is head back one more time and get this up to 350. Once it's up to 350, we're good to go. And there we go, 358.98 Demonic Will. That actually didn't take too long. It took a little while, but it didn't take too long. And so now we should be able to put this here together, and we're only going to use 30 Will. Uh, we have to have 350 in there, but it's only going to use 30 of the 350 that we have. Uh, we do need one more Imbued Slate, uh, so we are going to have to put a new stone in here. Uh, the Imbued Lever is turned on. We'll do a quick uh, dip to get Tranquility and put some more blood in here. I think that should be enough blood there, but we'll do one more deposit just to be safe. Uh, let's quickly grab a new set of shears. As well as one stone and one iron. So one iron, and we've already got the stone. Iron, shear, stone, common tartaric gem, and hopefully one imbued slate into the Hellfire Forge. It took a while, chat, but there we go. We have the Reverter. So now all we have to do um, is actually make the uh, Alchemical Reaction Chamber, uh, which thankfully is a little easier. Does require two more slates, but again, thankfully, that's not going to be too difficult for us. We'll throw two stone in there, and that should get processed into two imbued slates. As for everything else, I think we probably have it. Yeah, we need a furnace here. And that's everything apart from the slates. So uh, let's just make sure we do have enough uh, life points in the old altar here. Uh, my hearts have stopped refilling, which usually means that I am out of meat in my old uh, meat feeder. And two imbued slates later. Boom and boom. We have the ARC, the Alchemical Reaction Chamber. We'll throw that down right about here. Uh, this guy does not require... Uh, any form of power. We just have to put in the reverter, like so. And then if we're going to make the uh, bloodstone bricks, we just need the weak blood shard. The weak blood shard we can get uh, with just a master blood orb into that uh, chamber. Unfortunately, we don't have the master blood orb yet because that's actually uh, the tier four blood orb. And so for now, we are going to have to use this recipe down here with the imbued slate, uh, which means again, we have to put one more stone in uh, over here, thankfully, though, we have all of the runes of self-sacrifice and uh, the tranquil altar underneath it. So uh, getting the extra rune here shouldn't be too bad. Uh, and again, if we look at it with the uh, divination sigil, you'll see in the top left there that the uh, number is going down quite quickly because of all the speed upgrades that we have making this nice and fast. Imbued slate goes in. And slowly but surely, that's going to definitely produce at least one of the weak blood shards, and we have a 20% chance to get a second. We didn't get one, but that is fine. And then we can craft one weak blood shard with one stone, and we get eight large bloodstone bricks. And so now, chat, finally, it took us a while, but circling back around, if we were to re-visualize the tier four altar, we should be able to probably make this happen. So uh, we needed 28 more runes. Uh, we do have 112 blank slates, so uh, that's more than 28. And we should also have a ton of stone down here, because I don't think we're going to quite have enough in the system, but we do have over 2,000 in this drawer, thanks to the Material Stoneworks factory. So let's, for now, we're going to craft up 28 blank ones, of course, in the future. Uh, we could upgrade these to be any rune we like. We also need 16, I think, stone bricks. 
we already have 14, so we'll just make one more batch there, taking us to 18. And that should be everything that we need for the tier four altar. And there we have it. So now if we right click with our divination sigil, we should see uh, tier four. We do, beautiful. Still the same capacity because we've not put in uh, any extra capacity upgrades, although now we do have 28 more runes worth of space uh, to add more capacity upgrades, more speed upgrades, uh, more of any kind of upgrade that we would like. And I think, chat, that's probably where we're going to have to wrap things up for today. I was hoping to get the steel casing automated today, but uh, I apparently underestimated just how long it was going to take to get the uh, enchantment stuff set up, to get the Tartaric gems, to kill all the pigmen uh, and all that jazz. So uh, next time we will come back, we will look at utilizing this tier four altar uh, to craft a master ritual stone, that being this guy right here, as well as some ritual stones uh, and some higher tier slates. Uh, we don't, you don't need the tier four altar to make the master ritual stone. However, um, we need to get this guy, the ritual diviner brackets dusk. The dusk bit is important because it requires demonic slates. Demonic slates are made in tier four blood altars. So we need the tier four blood altar for that. Next time we'll come back, we'll turn our imbued slates into demonic slates. We'll use those to set up our first ritual, which is hopefully going to allow us to automate the production of life points so we don't have to continually uh, bounce up and down on this elevator to refill our blood altar and in turn that's going to allow us to fully automate the steel casing uh, if we can constantly send life points into the blood altar here uh, one last thing i will do though before we wrap up for today is i will upgrade our tiles uh, those being our stone path to uh, one stone path so we'll take these we do need the higher tier blood orb we need the uh, the ma uh, sorry not the master yeah, we need the master blood orb. So we do need one more uh, weak blood shard here. Thankfully, uh, that is just one slate. So uh, once again, we'll drop this guy in right about there. Uh, now, to make the master blood orb, we do need 40,000 LP. So we are going to have to add, uh, first of all, some more life points to this. Uh, but we're also going to have to add a few more uh, capacity runes here. Again, thankfully, I don't think the capacity runes are going to be too difficult for us to make here. Uh, just buckets, imbued slates, and stone. So we are going to have to do a little bit of sacrificial knifing, uh, which I probably should have done before we uh, removed the stone stairs. All right, chat. A little while later, we've made seven more runes of capacity. We have 50, uh, 40,000 LP in our tier four altar. If we drop in our weak blood shard, that number in the top left there is going to start rapidly decreasing. And so any second now, we should receive our Magician's Blood Orb, which we can then craft with our path. I did put down some of the stone path again, just to uh, increase our gain from the Tranquility Altar. But uh, we'll pick those back up. This guy is done. We'll take this, get rid of this recipe here. Blood Orb. Plus stone path equals one stone path. That's probably more one stone path than we need, but we can now put this down. And so hopefully going forward, we should be able to get a 200% a boost to each deposit on top of all of the bonuses that we get from the uh, runes of self-sacrifice. And also because we're a tier four altar, uh, we could if we wanted to add uh, even more runes of self-sacrifice to increase it even further. I don't necessarily think that's uh, going to be worth it because hopefully in the next stream, uh, we're going to automate the production of LP anyway. Uh, this is basically just to uh, tie us over until then to make our lives a little easier and make things a little faster. But uh, let's just quickly fill in the rest of these here. And there we go. We have a 196% boost. We're not quite at that max 200. Uh, that'll be because we don't have our uh, Dark Oak logs down. We could if we wanted to uh, re-add in some of the dark oak logs here and i'm assuming that would take us back up uh, over 200 199 of course these are going to burn again as, uh, as soon as the fire spreads but there it is there is the maximum 200 percent boost to our deposits almost a doubling from where we were previously uh, but for now guys i'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there